My guest today is the man when it comes to proxy design and corporate communications. Ian Poole is one of the first to enter the proxy design profession over a decade and a half ago. He saw something that few of us did. He's a managing director for Argyle, a shop that specializes in proxy design with many former in-house lawyers on his team. I've known Ian a long time. We worked together 20 years ago at R.R. Donnelly, and he really knows his stuff, as you'll soon see. Not only that, he's a great friend, a thoughtful person, and has a broad worldview due to his international background and experience. I'm Brock Romanek, today on Zippy Point. So Ian, what type of different approaches might companies take to their executive summary for the CDNA? Sure, I, I think the big question is when is some when is a summary not no longer a summary, um, and around reducing volume. And we get asked the same question about the proxy summary quite a lot as well that that we'll talk about in a couple of minutes. I think that there is an appetite for investors for a distilled story that's very short and clear and easy to understand without having to wade through a, a lot of document. On the other hand, there is an appetite for additional disclosures. So the challenge is telling the story in a way that is fulsome and transparent and accurate and creating as, as little extra volume as possible. So we'll talk about two different approaches to that, starting with um, work that the Southern Company has done. So Laura Hewitt and Lindsay uh, McClelland at the Southern Company really think about every single page of their document every year to ensure that it's responsive to shareholders, and is, um, is telling their story clearly. Their document's been recognized with accolades. The way that they present their board of directors is very lively. They speak with authenticity, authenticity and fluency about the company's values at work. And this year, they really focused in on what we would generally call the executive summary to the CDNA, distilling it down really to this one page at a glance. So let me begin with the, uh, the left page first. So again, we've got two pages that are married together, which we've seen as a key theme. They can live alone, but when you look at what you'll find in the CDNA, your eye is drawn over to the CDNA at a glance. In this reference page to what is in the CDNA on the left, they have the T1, so the primary level of title, a little explanation as to what is in that section, so readers can zero into what they're really looking for. The NEOs are presented over on the right. Something that I really like that, uh, that Laura and Lindsay have done is down at the bottom of the page, they have this little reference section for things that are new within the CDNA. And I think that that's really helpful for readers that want to see what has changed and go directly for that section. That can work for the CDNA or the document as a whole. So then on the right, um, is a page that goes really to the conclusion and presents the key need to know, the elevator pitch from the CDNA, if you like. So at the top of the page, you've got key performance highlights for the year, how the company has performed for its customers and for its investors, the company's compensation philosophy, which they call their beliefs at Southern Company, how the company performed against its metrics in the course of the year, the compensation decisions for the CEO, and then some supporting information that includes responsiveness to shareholders, goal rigor, annual change in pension value, in each case with a link to readers seeking to go for a deeper dive. So I think that the team at Southern Company did a really good job in this spread of taking a lot of information, presenting the conclusion with an appropriate level of supporting information to make it understood without overwhelming the reader. So what about your ConocoPhillips example here? Yeah, so um, the way in which a company approaches its disclosures obviously very much depends on the company's circumstances, the market that it operates in, the expectations of its shareholders. So ConocoPhillips has a seven-page overview of its compensation section that goes into a greater level of detail. So we begin with the structure of the program, the metrics and the pay mix, which is well presented on the first page. Going forward, there's responsiveness to shareholders, 
shareholder outreach, engagement with shareholders, again, dealt with in a level of detail that can dispense readers from reading the entire cDNA. But we clearly see that ConocoPhillips is listening closely to its shareholders. And on the next page, we see changes that have been made as a result of listening to the company's shareholders. That's a formula that we see quite often that we'll discuss a little bit later. They move on through um, the company's strategy and strong execution of the strategy uh, in alignment with the company's priorities, how the company is leading um, an industry transformation in the light of challenges for the oil and gas industry. And then I believe we have um, a comparison with peers, how the company is performing, and this chart that brings together again, as, as we spoke about with Exelon a little earlier, the company's compensation metrics and how they're aligned with the company's strategy. Um, the outcome being that the oil and gas, gas business being boom and bust and up and down, ConocoPhillips' objective is to provide strong, durable share, shareholder returns throughout cycle. And so to see all of Ian's videos about proxy design, go to hashtag zippy point, hashtag proxy design in YouTube, or you'll see these broken out separately on the zippy point website. Thank you, Ian.